What is up YouTube? Welcome back, Aeneas here. We got another Monday meta update for you. And today we're going to take a look at standard best of one, best of three, and a little bit of historic. Uh, as well as some other cool brews and things that have been going on in Twitter. So yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, so on the best of one ladder in standard, it's kind of a crazy world right now. Uh, it's totally different from the best of three meta. Uh, aggro decks are king. Mono White is the top dog there, just dominating with a 50% win rate. Um, many different variations of the deck, but it's just it's doing very, very well. Um, currently, it's it's we're looking at a, a wider range today because the new season, new the new ladder reset just happened. So everyone's back down in Platinum Diamond again. And uh, yeah, so but anyway, White is doing the best so far, red is doing well, gruel is doing well, and of course black is still a solid deck, of course. It's always a solid deck. But um, yeah, aggro is very viable in the best of one ladder. And uh, enchantments is not too shabby. Um, I would, it, yeah, I mean it has some good matchups, some bad matchups. Uh, definitely struggles a little bit sometimes, but it, uh, it's good against Mono Black most of the time. So that's another good solid option if you want to beat up on the, the Black decks. Um, and then of course, you know, there's still things like Esper, Rakdos, and uh, Grixis, which are also all very solid decks. But in best of one, seems like aggro is kind of the king right now. We see kind of a different story when we look at the uh, best of three ladder though. Looks like the control and the mid-range decks are doing the best in best of three. Mono Black is currently doing the best at the top. And Grixis is right up there with uh, Mono Black. Almost the same win rate, about 60%. Then uh, not too far behind, you got things like Esper and Rakdos, which are doing quite well. There is a new sneaky contender that's been popping up, though. Band control. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the band control decks that people have been pop, uh, trying out and doing well with. If we look at the standard best of one lists, um, again, oh, I thought there was one on here, but um, yeah, mostly you just see those aggressive decks and the mono black, of course, which are all doing well in best of one. So if you're short on the wild cards, anything like that, I would say check out Mono White or Mono Red. Uh, probably Mono Red is actually the cheaper, has a lot of uncommons, and as you can see here, 59% win rate. That's as good as, as you can get basically in, in best of one. So a nice cheap deck that's doing well. Delver, Mono Blue Delver is also doing quite well, and it's pretty affordable. Um, lots of uncommons in there. I mean, besides the creatures, everything is pretty much common or uncommon. So quite cheap there. And uh, yeah, even if you just want to change a pace, you can try Gruul, you can try uh, Enchantments, Rakdos, there's a lot of things that are viable in the best of one format. And then, uh, as I was mentioning, in the best of three, we see the band control. Uh, this is one list that I found that I also have another one that I'll show you in a little bit, but basically having a lot of good value creatures like Denik and Katilda and uh, Shanna and stuff like that. And your top end is Storm of the Festival to just get a ton of value with your Planeswalkers and these, these strong creatures like AO and stuff like that. And uh, even Grafted Identity to steal people's creatures. So I think basically the point of this deck is uh, it's going on top of the mid-range deck. So it wants to beat up on the Mono Blacks, the Grixis, the Rakdos. Um, even the enchantment decks, like this is this is going over all those decks. So the really only weakness that's going to be for this deck is those aggro decks, the the red and the white uh, aggro decks. But um, as we saw in best of three, those decks aren't really doing so well normally. So because of that, the band control lists are doing a lot better in best of three than normal. All right, and I mentioned. Um, that we will look at some of uh, the other decks later, the, another band control later. But I wanted to quickly show you like some of the tournaments that happened over the weekend. This was a interesting tournament, um, midweek tournament Black Pearl, and actually they had a special rule where no 
black colored uh, mana could be used in any of the decks. So it was kind of interesting to see the different takes people had when they weren't using any of the black mana. So the number one says Boros Fury is kind of like uh, a value mid rangey white red deck with all the like token generators, Wandering Emperor, Fable, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Faithful Absence, um, I think Wedding, yeah, Wedding Announcement, stuff like that. So this deck is pretty interesting, and honestly, I think this deck could be pretty good. There's quite a lot of like the really strong cards in here, Wandering Emperor, Fable, and Wedding Announcement. Those are all just really solid cards and um, good against the black decks because like when you make tokens, it's harder to get sacked from Liliana or Invoke Despair or stuff like that. So this might be a real deck, might be a solid deck. Um, definitely worth trying out if you really like Boros or uh, like more, slightly more aggressive decks that aren't black, something like that. So yeah, worth a shot. Um, this second one's kind of a debate. It says Absent Aggro, but actually it's just a Mono Red deck. So Mono Red took the second place in this tournament. Um, doing very, very well. So yeah, Mono Red, not too shabby even uh, in best of three in this tournament. And then the third place was an Azorius Control List with Wandering Emperor, Teferi, Sanctuary Warden. So a lot of these big creatures and Planeswalkers and lots of removal. All right, um, but yeah, that's like I said, that's a special tournament. No black allowed in that one, but I, I do think that Boros Fury list looks pretty interesting. Could be good, could be a contender, e even on the ladder. And then the other tournament that happened this weekend uh, was taken down by kind of the usuals, Esper, Grixis, Rakdos, uh, that kind of stuff. So just kind of standard what you would expect there, nothing super special. All right, and then uh, I wanted to take a look at some spicy lists that have been popping up on Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen some of these, but um, yeah, I kind of scoured the web for some interesting control or just spicy lists for, for ranking up for laddering. And this one took down a tournament, someone's uh, RCQ, standard RCQ, and um, it's five color control. And they are making use of cards like Shadow Prophecy, Leyline Binding, and Drag to the Bottom, all of which want that lots of different colored mana. And then you get like a pretty good value boost from it. Uh, I guess also Herd Migration is another one which can ramp you early or, well, not ramp you, but heal you, draw you land, and then late game uh, becomes your finisher as you get a bunch of t creature tokens to finish the game. Yeah, so very, very interesting list. Um, pretty strong. I mean, they won their tournament, and I've played around with some of these domain-style decks. They seem very good. I think um, currently in the meta, it seems like they're doing a lot better than, than before. So especially to counter some of these like ag aggressive decks, these decks with the lots of sweepers and, and removal and stuff are definitely doing better than they were before. So worth a shot. Looks pretty cool, and this person did very well with it, so definitely a viable deck. All right, cool. Um, this other deck is a pretty crazy deck, to be honest. Uh, this involves turning your sagas into creatures with Xur, and then you can remove the counters from them with your Falco or your Sanctuary Warden, and um, basically you just... They never get to finish the saga. You can keep ticking them up and ticking them down and getting value from them, and they just never go away. And you just keep drawing cards and getting value. So very cool, very spicy brew, especially with the Kami War. That's a lot of value to go from like exile a target to return another thing and make them discard and then exile again and then return another thing and discard. So um, yeah, very potentially strong and very... Uh, spicy list so if you want to have some fun do some interesting things you can check this one out um, this person honey was doing very well with honey milk i guess was doing very well with the deck on the ladder for them so yeah seems good give it a shot if you like that uh, kind of interaction combo kind of thing another one that did well was this um is it list this is a pretty uh, i guess i wouldn't say cheap list but it's um, a little bit less expensive than some of the top end lists and uh, has some cards that are strong but we haven't really seen being played like Lear 
and uh, Temporal Firestorm and Hullbreaker, stuff like that. And includes a card which hasn't seen any play, but not because it's not strong, but just there wasn't a good shelf for it, not a good home for it, and people haven't really got to play around with it that much. So Aether Channeler. Um, this is a pretty cool card, always a two for one value. You can either draw a card, you can bounce something, or you can make a bird token. So a uh, very, very cool card and interested to see that it did well for this person. Uh, so yeah, that's super cool as well. And then the last one I wanted to mention was this Bant Reclamation deck. So that's, I mentioned there's another Bant Control that was doing well. And that's this one has uh, basically a lot of ways to cycle cards and uh, gain life and then uh, also some ways to destroy all the creatures so you can stabilize and the whole point is basically you play a lot of these lands that are gaining you life and then go into your graveyard and then you get them all back with splendid reclamation and so you ramp from like four or five mana up to like 10 mana and now suddenly you can cast your holebreaker horror and some other spell and just win the game from there i tried it out a bit and it's been doing very well, and I'm very, uh, I think it's very cool. I'll probably have a video out on this either tomorrow or Wednesday. Uh, but yeah, very, very cool deck. Very spicy from uh, Schlop here. So um, yeah, you can check out their Twitter, but this list is pretty sweet, I must admit. All right, well, that's it for Standard. Um, just real quick, there was one historic tournament over the weekend, so I thought I'd share the details of that. Um, uh, Rakdos Midrange took it down. This is actually basically a standard list with just a few historic cards in there. Um, but yeah, some of these cards are strong. I guess more than a few, but Shieldred is there and Bloodtide Harvester is still there. Tenacious Underdog, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So some of these cards are good enough to be played in historic. That's crazy to me, but, uh, yeah. So if you, if you like your Rakdos in standard, you can play in historic apparently. And second place was Bant Angels, so Angels Tribal getting it done with uh, Angels and Coco and um, yeah, just life gaining out out life gaining other people and doing massive swings where you generate a bunch of angels and stuff like that. All right, um, but yeah, that's kind of it for the meta update. Let me know what decks got you excited. Any of these spicy brews um, interesting you? Don't get it wrong. I mean, black mono black is still a strong deck. But to be honest, I've tried a lot of these brews and they've been doing very well on the ladder. So uh, don't be worried about oh, are they gonna work? You know, can I get to mythic with these lists? See, most of these ones that I've shared today from Twitter are very solid and. Um, should be able to get you there and they're just more fun to be honest than just playing mono black mono black mono black all the time so get out there have some fun and until next time see ya